All right, so I am on the line right now, David Draymond of Disturbed. David, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes today to sit and chat with us. How is life going at the moment? It's nice and peaceful right now. It's not going to last very long. Right, you getting a little calm before the storm that is the big summer tour? Exactly. Are you getting to relax a little bit? Yeah, I spent some time with the wife and son. My my little boy will be uh, three years old in September, so he's... You know, it's a, a lot is happening at this age, and I'm, like, gone for three weeks, and I, like, miss him, you know, saying a few words here and there, going from that point to going to having full-on conversations with you. You know I mean? It, right. it, It's not crazy. just crazy. So I've been a little bit of time at home in between uh, Rock and the rest of the world, so right. it's a good thing. Well, good thing technology is out there, so you can do a little FaceTiming while you're away, right? It helps. It helps, for sure. So, you know, between uh, the last album and the new album, Immortalize, you guys had a lot of downtime. Obviously, you know, you got married, you had a baby. Has becoming a father kind of changed the writing process for you? Does it make anything different when you come back fresh off of that and then having new life experiences? Um, The primary difference, I would say, is that you're more defensive than you've ever been of everything in the world. Right, I can understand you got that. a child, you know, you're responsible for another life, and you love that other life more than anything else on the face of this planet. That's a pretty all-encompassing thing. <laughs> so it, it, it's bound to affect your focus. And I think that with Immortalized, we definitely had a very, very precise focus in terms of, you know, how we wanted to do what we wanted to do, uh, you know, hopefully making sure that there were no limitations of any kind, keeping doors open to creativity. I mean, everything was really beautiful experience this time. Awesome. Was it kind of bizarre? It at all times, but this one was especially beautiful. <laughs> right. Was it kind of bizarre getting back in the studio with the guys again after being apart for so long? No, you know, what was bizarre was relearning that when we're in a room together, uh, and we're improvising, uh, that we have chemistry that is unlike any that I've ever, ever experienced, at least in my musical career. And Dan Donegan is the, you know, Joe Perry to my Steven Tyler, so to speak. And, right. You know, Mike is a huge part of that process as well. And, you know, we had become very reliant uh, since we both live or all live in different cities at this point of our career. You know, Dan's the last guy that lives in the south side of Chicago. Mikey lives about right outside of Milwaukee. And John and I live in Austin, Texas. So we'd be sending music files back and forth and prep songs for a record. And this immortalized cycle was the first time that you know, we kind of forced the issue when every single writing session happened with the, at least the three of us present in the room together while we were coming up with ideas. So it was pretty amazing. Uh, very, very inspiring to, to know that we still have the ability and that the well hasn't run dry. I heard when uh, you guys were getting back to head in the studio to record, I heard you say that, you know, you guys were keeping it on the low, seriously, and had to tell a couple little white lies to some close friends and families to make sure you could keep yep. this under wrap. Was there any sort of interesting stories you kind of put out there so as to not get in trouble but not reveal your well, secrets? Well, that's why they're white lies. You know, they're really not all that interesting because they're kind of partially true. Um, I, my, my general... Uh, excuse to everybody is what was I doing in Vegas? I was working on some music, working, you know, with some other baby bands producing. And truth be told is I'm always uh, taking in new music from young artists. You know, even uh, other people in the industry that are just colleagues of mine, I'll, I'll take stuff in when I have them in it, uh, which isn't very often, unfortunately, these days. And, uh, you know, and, and work on something together with them. But um, creativity is a beautiful thing when you have people to share it with. Absolutely. So you guys just did a ton of festival dates. I've seen you guys all over across the board. Getting ready to kick off your summer tour this weekend. We are super pumped here in the Capital Region. We get you guys Tuesday night, of course, Disturbed, Breaking Benjamin, Alter Bridge, Santa Sonia. They're going to be playing out at SPAC. Tickets still available, by the way, if you need those. What can we expect of the full Disturbed headlining tour this time around after being so long with not touring? together? Well, you definitely can expect all the bells and whistles uh, that people have been at least getting images from from our Canadian run that we did uh, from the festival run. The nice thing about this run is we'll be similar type of amphitheater environment every night of the run, so we'll be able to keep that production consistent and be able to use more of our toys <laughs> on a consistent basis. Right, you We got a lot of them. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's not going to be the production that makes this show uh, a memorable 
night. It's going to be the amazing lineup and the, just a staggering amount of talent on this bill and, and uh, just a cavalcade of hit after hit after hit from a bunch of bands who've done it time and time again and who will continue to do it. And I'm very, very proud of what we've been able to put together with this thing. And I think everybody's going to feel it <laughs> the night we're there. Oh, sure. I bet. It's going to be a night of sing-alongs. I don't think anybody is going to stop singing throughout the entire show. Your new album alone is just putting out hit after hit after hit, and Sound of Silence is just going insane. I know a lot of people were questioning at first whether or not we were going to get to see it live, and we're hoping that this is going to be the case. So we're pretty pumped about that. Oh, Can we course. anticipate of that? Course. We can't. We can't not play it now. That, that, that we might as well, you know, <laughs> set ourselves <laughs> up for a potential riot at this point. <laughs> right. We, it's like we may as well not play down with the sickness, for God's sake. You know, we, we have to play the current hit single. That would be sacrilege. Did you anticipate when you guys were recording this one that this one was going to blow up like it did? Uh, we had high hopes, for sure. I mean, I'm seeing it, you know, it's from being on Dancing with the Stars. I I see it crossing over to Top 40 radio right now. It's just insane. It's pretty crazy. Uh, Definitely some territory I never thought that we would uh, reach. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm very honored. We are very honored as a band, and uh, we're just overwhelmed by how amazingly it's been received by everyone. We knew going into it that we had something special. It definitely affected us emotionally, mm-hmm. and we were just hoping that it would resonate with others the same way that it did with us. So. I know the first time I heard it, it definitely gave you chills like throughout the whole song, and we get requests sure. for it like every hour, so it's awesome. Oh. So speaking of covers, you know, we know that you do covers pretty much every album or so. Is there any cover that you have wanted to try to uh, tackle, and then when you guys go to try to do it, you're just like, yeah, this isn't working? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, no, you know... There really has we give a lot of thought to what we even start to contemplate working on, and so the selection process alone is pretty vigorous and strenuous, and a little stupid to be honest. <laughs> um, you know, but we have a way of finding a creative way. Ninety percent of the time, uh, I'm not saying there's never you know a, a successful attempt, but to make it work. And and not just make it work in a way that, you know, works technically, but one that works powerfully and one that still has a huge hook that stays with you. We've really been good in that way. We've been good with our covers, especially with not really taking away from the hook the way that the song was written. Right. With respecting that. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the whole point of covering the song in the first place. You want that memorable hook to be working for your favor. (laughs) Not against it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think that we stylistically have been able to always make each version our own. And this is a left turn that caught people off guard. And we loved making that left turn and it felt great. And I think that the results just simply mean that we're going to have to at least put out something like that with each body of work, at least one song among each, among each body of work <laughs> that speaks to that side that we've tapped into. But we're still going to be disturbed. I think you guys did pretty successful. I mean, you haven't disappointed anybody as up to yet. You're blowing our minds beyond, uh, you know, what anybody could have expected. Now, when you guys have been playing some shows, you know, we noticed that you're bringing some of the other people on stage doing like a little medley of different things. Can we anticipate Mm -hmm. any fun stuff happening between the bands that are going to be on the road this summer with you? We're going to need to figure out what and how and when. (laughs) Um, There's a lot of logistics involved. I mean, you're talking about four big bands, uh, four pretty amazing frontmen and uh, amazing, you know, players in those bands, uh, respectfully. So uh, there's a lot of potential opportunities for some collaboration, live collaboration. We're, we're, we're going to have to see. I'd be very, very surprised if we saw none of it <laughs> the entire <laughs> tour. Um, you know, I, I'm sure we'll see some. How much? That I can't tell you. That. That, that really depends on a nightly basis. I mean, the one thing that people need to understand is that, you know, we, we are dealing with human beings here. You know, all of us, we actually play, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and it, it, so we have to worry about our bodies. And, and if you're 
always beating the hell out of yourself, you're not going to remain consistent. So you have to know your limitations. Right. Well, you got a couple of days till you hit spec, so we will be uh, anxiously anticipating the show. Um, I do have one Looking more question. Closer. One more question mm-hmm. before I let you go that I, I've always been kind of curious about. Sure. Um, Disturbed and your, yourself mainly is kind of known for kind of throwing a little like scat lyrics into your songs. And I've always wondered at mm-hmm. how that comes about. Is that something that you're just kind of putting in there to hold plays for the melody for the moment? Or it just comes exactly. organically? Or Exactly. That's, that's exactly what it is. Because when I'm given, let's say, I mean, usually I, it happens two ways, and I hope this doesn't get too personal for you. Okay. But <laughs> I either come up with the melodies and rhythms in a scat format on their own, you know, or I will write them to a pre-existing riff and accompanying drumbeat rhythm to three-part progression. And Dan will usually send me about three or four or five of those two or three-part progression ideas, and I'll start improvising with melody and rhythm in that scat format. Gilly da ba doo whatever, just absolute gibberish. Right. Uh, just to, again, find the placement, see what melody, what notes work within what he's got going on musically. That's pretty much the way that I've always done it. There's it's not necessarily a thing that's the only way to do it. But. <laughs> All right. Well, David, thank you so much for taking some time today to sit and chat with us. Obviously, we are super amped for the show. Tuesday night, Saratoga Performing Arts Center. It's Disturbed, Breaky Benjamin, Alter Bridge, St. Estonia. We will see you there. Is there anything you would like to add to everybody anxiously awaiting the show before we let you go? Just that we're really looking forward to getting back out there with, like I said, all of our toys at our disposal and People should put on the uh, uh, the high SPF uh, sunblock because uh, there's going to be a lot of pyrotechnics <laughs> going on that night. All right, David, thank Dang you it. so much. We can't wait to see you. We will see you on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.